How's it going guys and girls? Welcome to Kingdom X, where today we're going to be looking at this, the wolf spider and how well Obsidian adapted the real life wolf spider and all its characteristics and dumped it into Grounded to turn it into the apex predator that we've all feared from day one until you get the Broodmother Club and you learn how to block. Anyway, before we start the video, I just want to remind you that I am doing a series on all these bugs, so let me know which bug you want me to do next down in the comments. And of course, you can check out the other videos on the channel or in this playlist. So, wolf spiders. They are robust and agile hunters, as we would expect from the creatures that we've been attacked by so many times in Grounded. They also have excellent eyesight compared to a lot of other spiders. Um, they live mostly in solitude and they hunt alone, which is exactly how they behave in the game. Apart from one, which is that there's two of them, sometimes three, underneath the oak tree. Maybe they just got something wrong. Maybe that's a future update. Only one spider under the oak tree. Grounded. Obsidian, are you listening? They, they hunt in solitude. Although it does say mostly hunt in solitude. Urgh. Maybe, maybe two under the oak tree is fine. They do not spin webs. Some of them are opportunic hunts, uh, opportunist hunters. They pounce on their prey as they find it, sometimes chasing it over small distances. That's exactly how they behave in the game. That's exactly how they behave, right? They jump up at us. They, they chase us over small... It's absolutely perfect. However, not all of them behave like that. Some of them will actually hide away in a burrow and attack as something goes past. Again, there are a few spiders on this map, on the in the backyard, in grounded, the hide of burrows. So they kind of got that right too. Moving on to the raw science, because science is important. Their eyes, their eyesight, as we have already established, I already said, is very, very good. And this is because they have three different rows of eyes. They have eight eyes in total, three different rows. The bottom row has four eyes on it as you can see in this picture uh, just over here you can see those small eyes in the bottom row those four eyes they then have two large eyes in the middle and then right at the top of the heads they have two medium sized eyes um which differentiates them differentiates them from a lot of other arachnids aka spiders uh who have poorer vision these guys have got excellent eyesight they also fun fact if you were to shine a light around you can sometimes see the, the light ref reflecting in their eyes. So you can actually almost spot them in, in the garden or in the, in the shed or wherever it is that you find them. You can actually spot them using a torch. Their eyes will, will shine up. Interesting fun fact. This reflective tissue is only found in the four eyes, the four smaller eyes, and is, I think, what is it? The third best eyesight of all spider groups. Um, only better by jumping spiders and the huntsman spider. We don't want Huntsmans. No thank you, Obsidian, if you're listening. No thank you, no Huntsman spiders, we're good, thanks. Bye. Wolf spiders are also unique in how they carry their young. Now, this isn't implemented into the game, but they have an egg sac that they don't leave behind. It actually stays attached to their abdomen, so they carry them around with them. Another thing unique to wolf spiders, which you wouldn't expect from these horrible things that are constantly killing us in the backyard, is they're actually brilliant mums. When their young hatch, the mum, they actually climb up the mum's legs and they will just stay on the abdomen for a good couple of weeks. Um, you know, the mum's keeping them safe. While there's other spiders, you know, they leave their eggs sacs somewhere, the spiders hatch, they all disappear. Bye, see you later. Kids have left the house. No other spiders are known to do this for a prolonged period of time. So, fantastic mums. Next time you're bopping one on the face with a mint mallet, just think to yourself... Whose mum is this? They depend on their camouflage for protection, hence the colors are not bright and in your face, very much like the, like the orb weavers are. So these guys are camouflaged. They are the same color as their surroundings, hence why, you know, in the backyard, they live under the oak tree, they live in, in, in burrows under the ground, in all of the leaves and stuff. So they have got this kind of brown and uh, very light brown, almost orangey color to fit in with that surrounding habitat. The scientific name is a Lycosidae. Lycosidae. Lyco... Lycosidae. The Lycosidae or Lycosidae. Lycosidae, however you want to say it, the, the Latin word for, for the, the group that is the wolf spider, um, quite often make deep tubular burrows, in which case they lurk there most of the time. They also like burying under, like sheltering under rocks and other shelters that nature may provide. But when it starts to get a bit cold, then they will start to find their way into human habitation. They will start to 
move into into our houses to try and keep warm uh, which is why sometimes you might find them in a house or in a shed uh, buildings where they basically move in during the autumn to try and keep warm and also try and search for females they're actually considered a beneficial bug because of how well they help to control insects and pests um as we spoke about in the roly-poly video which apparently roly-polies are sometimes called menaces uh, they actually eat roly-polies there's just an example of uh, of these two bugs uh, fitting in together in in the grand ecosystem uh, that we are trying to experience i guess here here in grounded we're gonna have to get into this as we are dealing with science here wolf spiders obviously inject venom now if continually provoked or in grounded if you just go near them obviously because Science. Symptoms of their bites will include for us will include swelling, mild pain, and itching. Um, obviously, when you're only this tall and you're Max or Hoops or Willow or Pete, slightly different process. I assume that the venom is the the small part of the fact that you've just been bitten by some giant fangs on a giant spider that's just trying to ruin your day. Uh, but in real life, actually, it's mainly mild pain, swelling, itching. So where do they live? Exactly where you'd expect them to live, like forests and meadows and backyards, um, places that you, you know, you would kind of probably expect them to be based on everything we've already just spoken about. Their spiderlings, the babies though, disperse aerially. So they catch the wind and off they go, which is why they have quite a wide distribution. Um, you know, one, one, set of eggs shall we say won't just stay in one small area they'll actually spread out quite far um because of that aerial distribution a lot of spiders do this uh, you've seen it probably if you've ever seen <laughs> ever seen like charlotte's web i'm just throwing this out there if you ever watched charlotte's web as a kid then you'll know you know they they, they did the same thing you know they, they catch the wind and, and off they go and or is it will by the pig is it will by the pig it was like oh no all the babies but anyway uh, so yeah, they disperse aerially. Most of these spiders are wanderers. They don't have a permanent home, even if they will, you know, reside into a, a, a burrow in the ground or under a rock or something. They won't have a permanent home. It's not like, yeah, this is, I'm setting up my address here. This is this is where I live. Please send all of my mail and my fan mail to, to this particular burrow. It's not the case. They'll, they'll be there for a bit and then they'll quite often wander off and go somewhere else trying to trying to find wherever the food source is. They, they, they're not stuck to one particular nest or anything like that. Some of them have a burrow that's left open. When they do make a burrow, some of them have a trap door. These, these, there's a lot of these guys. Um, you know, we, we generalize just wolf spider when we're in grounded because that's what they call it. But there are actually so many different types as you, as you hearing here, that do all sorts of different things. The mating behavior, which we're going to go into because this is quite entertaining. <laughs> The mating behavior of most species of wolf spider is actually quite complex. Uh, there's lots of different things involved, the uh, tufts and bristles and, and things like that on their legs. Um, obviously, all or most mostly found on the male of the species. That tends to be a, a thing, doesn't it, in the animal world, that, that the male of the species is always the one that's you've got the, the bright colors or, or whatever it is. Most often, these characteristics are found on their like modification to, the, to their first pair of legs. So uh, the, the very first set of legs on the, on the front of the, the spider itself, um, they can be divided into sort of like bristles that, that swell up. Um, <laughs> bristles that swell up or, or get fully elongated are some of the characteristics that they will quite often do compared to the other three pairs of legs that, that, that they have behind them. There's loads of these different behaviors depending on what, what actual specific species of wolf spider we're talking about here. But for the most part, most of them involve some sort of seismic, aka um, sort of like thumping or tapping uh, behavior with the legs, you know, tapping, vibrating, drumming, that that kind of thing. Most, most of the behavior will, will involve something along those lines as well as some visual cues that they will do as well, um, such as like waving their legs around as they're elongated and swollen up. <laughs> Pretty sure humans get arrested for that. But yeah, due, due to this mating behavior and the fact that they rely on a male and a female of a species to reproduce, they also, that's that adds to, to the reason to why they are such wanderers, why they wander around. But it does make me wonder, God, that was awful, if we only have for example, males or only have females in grounded. Do we have a male and a female? Is, is 
underneath the oak tree, maybe, where there's two. Maybe the idea is that that is a male and a female. I don't know. Maybe they've settled down, bought and got themselves a mortgage under the oak tree. They, I mean, it's a blimmin' big tree. I bet it was an expensive mortgage. And here's the last fun, interesting fact, which I do find highly amusing, is that males that have already mated have a higher probability of mating again. However, females that have already mated have a lower probability of mating again. This is a fact within this species. Let me know what you think about that down in the comments. Try and keep it clean. <laughs> From real world fact, South Carolina actually named the Hogna carolinensis the South or the Carolina wolf spider their official state spider in the year 2000. So they love wolf spiders there, or at least they love this one. I don't know if they love other ones, but they definitely love that one. That is about all for this guy. Most of those behaviors, as you've heard, we have actually seen brought into the game. So thumbs up to Obsidian for most of those. Um, let me know if there's anything else I haven't mentioned in the video down below. In the comments, let me know what animal, what bug you want me to go through next. And of course, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and like the video if you liked it and you want more. Uh, I do stream on this channel now, so if you're interested in watching live streams from Grounded and other games, then make sure to subscribe as well. It's been an awesome pleasure to, to share this raw science with you. Don't forget, science matters. Stay grounded. I'll speak to you in the next video. Goodbye.